All right, without any further ado, this is KNAC Long Beach, Los Angeles. Mike Stark and Pure Rock Talkback. And we're going to suspend the normal programming and take you all back. So strap yourselves in and welcome to the history of KNAC. Los Angeles, the final Pure Rock frontier. These are the voyages of KNAC. It's nine year mission, turning Southern California on to the coolest grooves in the universe. John Master here with Cuss and Rudolph, as I said, in case you just tuned in from Scorpion. I've seen poolside with Def Leppard's Joe Elliott, lead singer. You guys are in town for the, the MTV uh, Music Awards. I'm Paul Witsy here, and remember that telephone call I told you guys I was expecting sometime this afternoon? Ozzy! KNAC live in the studios with three very handsome young genitals, gentlemen. For nine years, we boldly went where no other radio station would go. 105.5 KNAC. For the past ten years, KNAC has been a leader in rock music for all of Los Angeles and Orange Counties. In recent years, KNAC has led the way in bringing you the new generation of supergroups and music like the Stray Cats, Berlin, <laughs> Flock of Seagulls, and more. In each and every case, KNAC has been first. But according to some people, first has not been enough. There are those that at this very moment would change KNAC drastically. They say no one listens, that no one cares if KNAC lives or dies. I don't believe it. I know you don't. I know that Rock and Rhythm 105.5 KNAC will live forever. <laughs> Get a rim shot on it and stand back. This is Pure Rock 105.5, KNAC, Long Beach, Los Angeles. Wild Bill Scott, what else? Huh? Are you ready for some? Here it comes out of your radio now. started it all off. The song that started the Pure Rock Revolution, ACDC, and it's a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll. And I'll tell you, you take a look at the tunes we just played and you say, my God, you guys have progressed a long way since that first day. But I'll tell you what, I think it's uh, time to give credit where credit is due. And uh, definitely, Jimmy, the Armored St. Christopher, and Gary Price, who's our general manager here at KNEC, both have done a kick-ass job through 1986. And you'd know, you just know it's got to continue through 1987. All right, we've been dealing out a whole bunch of pure rock here for you. Reconstructing. <laughs> <laughs> First hour of pure rock. It's been a good one, too. Eh? Happy anniversary, dude. Oh, happy anniversary, Scotty. Oh, happy anniversary, Paul. Ross. Hey, yeah, it's been a great one. I was, uh, I turned on the radio about 6 o'clock, and uh, I thought I was having a flashback or something. I was going... <laughs> Actually, I didn't learn about it till our second day of Pure Rock, and when my phone started ringing off the hook saying, Hey, dude, you got to check this out. And I checked it out, and I said, Well, this can't be happening. Mm, but it is. <laughs> and it continues. <laughs> Burning the road like a big dog in heat. Pure Rock 105.5 KNAC. Wake up screaming. Thrasher in the morning on Pure Rock 105.5 KNAC. KNAC. With that, by request from our old standby pal, Wiener in Anaheim. We're 626 now. And at uh, Rick Nipple Day again, 54 degrees downtown. Rush party. All right, I guess. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Halloween parties, I guess, starting tonight. Or this afternoon. So what you do is you keep KNAC, the all-request weekend, blasting at your house party, in your car, any other place you're going to happen to be, and uh, call in your request. <laughs> Veg, my hero. How are you, bro? Yeah, I'm doing pretty good, Thrash. <laughs> so what are you going as on Halloween, Veg? Well, I don't know about Halloween. What do you mean you don't know? <laughs> I haven't dressed up as anything in 10 years. Oh, so, well, you don't need to, huh? <laughs> 
You're just going to get your pillowcase and go out and collect some candy. <laughs> yeah, I'll dress up like Alice Cooper or something. There you go. <laughs> so how about meeting me over at Medieval Times for Halloween night? We're having a big party, you know. <laughs> I'm going as the Pope again. <laughs> of course. The Pope? Oh, yes. Oh, wow, man. What's your sermon going to be like? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I'll just mumble something about dominoes and get it over with kind of quick. <laughs> Are you keeping up with the veg? You sounded pretty hip this morning, pal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. Oh, wow. Yeah, oh, wow. There. Dangerous Darren and I are going to do this Medieval Times party Tuesday night for Halloween. So, I mean, you can go to the costume party even if you skip the feast and the show. So it's all getting underway, you know, about 8, 9 o'clock there. Veg, you holding on there, buddy? <laughs> okay. I'm going to have some free passes to give away to this Ra uh, Medieval Times thing, too, at Rain Tree for KNAC Night Monday. Right, Veg? Oh, wow. There you go. Rush Pie, my favorite guy. Thank you. Hey, Geek, oh. play that f***ing record, oh. will ya? Why, no problem. KNAC with Mike Monroe. Do you want to go fast? Do you want to go real, real fast? Then get ready for the fastest action ever this Tuesday night at the L.A. Coliseum when Pope John Paul takes on Benny Beelzebub Baker in non-stop foot-to-the-floor action. It's Papal Mud Bog 87. 50,000 cubic tons of dirt trucked into the Coliseum. Hosed down with 105.5 million gallons of holy water. There'll be enough slop for John Paul's fuel-injected four-wheel drive Pope Mobile to blow Benny Beelzebub Baker clear out of Southern California. It's Papal Mud Bog 87. There'll be selected mass healings, a blessing for everybody, and for your chance to win a free paper, papal, souvenir hat. Listen for John Paul to say, Hello, this is Paul John Paul. When I'm in L.A., I listen to the trash pie, my favorite guy. This announcement is not the cue to call. Don't miss the incredible action as the King of Catholics crushes all competition. Tuesday night, Papal Mud Bog 87, be there! KNAC. Time now for the continuing adventures of Dr. Thrashfinger, M.D. Dr. Thrashfinger to proctology. Dr. Thrashfinger to proctology right away. It started as just another busy day at Caesars Sinai Hospital. Too many patients. Oh, excuse me, Dr. Thrashfinger, but I'm ready for my exam. Yes, too many patients, and thank God, not enough time to service them all. Dr. Thrashfinger... To Procto! Pronto! All right, all right, I'm coming, I'm coming. My trusty assistant, Nurse Rugburns, met me at the door to the ward. Oh, there's the patient over there, Dr. Thrashfinger. He's got something foreign lodged in his... Yeah? Well, you know. All right, well, let's take a look. Get him buns up. <whistles> Forceps, please. Uh -huh. Crowbar. Whew, kind of dark in here. Give me a light, will you? Oh, light, doctor? Sure. <laughs> Here, doctor, a frosty mug of your favorite brew. Oh, well, that's real nice, Rug Burns, but I wanted a butt light! <laughs> That's Finger, you audio rump ranger. Dr. Thrashfinger, M.D. 105.5 KNC. Remember? 1986 to 1995. Yeah, rock. Winners of the Super Bowl of Rock and Roll for nine consecutive years. The legend lives on, lives on, lives on. Oh, okay. Well, the first time I ever threw up at a radio station, it was KNC. <laughs> KNC has been uh, one of the probably pure heavy metal stations in, in uh, not only California, but probably the entire United States. I've never traveled the world and seen a radio uh, t-shirt uh, that said any other station than KNC. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a sad day in Beantown. Pure Rock. One old five. Point. All right, we're on Pure Rock Talk Back. Joining us this morning is uh, the general manager of uh, KNAC, the man that has been here from the beginning, Gary Price. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, let's go back to the beginning, actually before the beginning. You uh, were here prior to the Pure Rock format, right? Right. We, uh, 
I, well, I joined the radio station in 1984, and it was rock and rhythm at the time, which was a combination of uh, about an 80% KROQ type bands and about 20% K Earth type bands. And you were, we were also in a different uh, location at that time. Well, we were. We were up on a uh, terrible. Uh, well, the building was okay. Our offices were not. Right. It was a. Uh, like the ninth floor of... Yeah, uh, it was real prehistoric. One of the oldest buildings in Long Beach, which is still standing, surprisingly yeah, enough. Well, the, the furniture was older than the building. It was, uh, it was pretty raggedy, and Yeah, that was the F&M building. And then uh, Fred Sands bought the radio station and rebuilt new studios and all new equipment. Now, Fred it. bought the station in what year? Uh, actually, I think he bought it in uh, December of 83 and began operating it in March of 84. And at that time, it was rock and rhythm, right? Yes, it was. Okay. Which brings us to the pure rock format. How did that come about? What were the seedlings of that? Uh, what were the musical factors in town that signaled that the time was right for pure rock? Well, there were a lot of uh, hard rock slash heavy metal bands that were uh, doing a lot of business at venues. Uh, Iron Maiden playing three and four nights in a row and, st and selling out. Right. And these bands were going platinum and gold, and uh, they were not getting any airplay. And KMET at that time was uh, was really diversifying. They were all over the road. And KLOS had pretty much abandoned the harder rock music and decided to go for an older age group. Right. And uh, we just felt there was a void, that uh, there was a there was really something happening in hard rock music, and... Uh, and nobody was paying any attention to it in Los Angeles, so we decided to be the station. So, uh, how did you put this this thing into motion? Uh, it started in January of 86, is when the format uh, took well, hold. Uh, but obviously there was planning ahead of there that. There was some planning ahead of it. Looking back on it, I'm not sure the planning was always uh, good as it could have been. <laughs> uh, we were still doing rock and rhythm, and we decided to go with uh, pure rock at 6 p.m. Uh, on a given day, I don't recall the day, I think it might have been a Monday. And uh, we didn't really inform any of the staff until that afternoon, about 3 o'clock, uh, with the exception of the program director, Jimmy Christopher, and the sales manager, uh, Nikki Randolph, who uh, had a mission of going to Tower Records and buying like a thousand hard rock albums. We had to build a library instantly. So and, that day they went out? Well, we went out that day, the day before, yeah. And, no uh, kidding. Yeah, and the clerk up at Tower said, wow, why are you buying all these albums? And uh, <laughs> and Jimmy said, oh, I'm going to start a hard rock station in Denver. And the guy said, God, I wish I lived in Denver. It'd be great if we had one in L.A. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, so uh, we, we informed everybody in a staff meeting about uh, 5 o'clock that day and uh, kicked it off at 6 p.m. with uh, ACDC. It's a long way to the top. Yeah, and uh, you obviously some of the people didn't stay on after that. They didn't like the format or, or yeah, whatever. That, that's true. A lot of people did not believe in it, and uh, salespeople decided they couldn't sell it, and certain jocks didn't want to be part of it. And uh, for that particular group of people, they looked at me like I should be locked up in a home. <laughs> And uh, what was I thinking about? I was out of my mind. Right. And uh, then they all came back a year later and said, wow, this really is working. Right. It? Which brings me to my next question, obviously. Uh, from a sales aspect, because that's that's been kind of your focus the last nine years, how were you able to prepare to sell KNAC in the beginning? Well, we, we positioned it uh, as a uh, unique audience that was extremely active, extremely loyal. And uh, we felt that if we put an honest uh, ad on the air that said, hey, this is, a, this is a good deal, go look at it, go buy it, that our audience would respond. And, the, and that's what happened. The, the, the businessmen felt the response of the radio station, uh, especially in the obvious lifestyle products that our audience was interested in. It worked very well. A lot of people perceive this audience as a difficult audience, a difficult image, and all of that. How did you get past those barriers uh, along the line? Well, we didn't get past those barriers totally. Uh, even today, there are many clients out there who will say, we don't want, uh, we don't want your audience in our store. Uh, and that's fine. We just move on and uh, talk to the smarter ones. And uh, there are a lot of merchants out there who understand that we've got a great audience, a good bunch of people, and uh, they spend and need things like everybody else. Right. And the other limitation you, that you have had to work with throughout the nine years is the signal. How, how, did well, you, how, you, how do you deal with that when you're, when you're selling a station like KNAC? 
the fact that our signal does not cover all of Los Angeles and Orange County, and specifically doesn't cover the valley, right. San Fernando Valley, uh, is one of the reasons we went Pure Rock. We felt because we couldn't compete with the KLOS and KMET on a full signal coverage, we had to be something very unique and very special. And uh, that provoked us to come up with KNAC's Pure Rock concept. Now, uh, after you got it rolling, I'm sure that you didn't realize what sort of a monster you had created. And then af after about a year, I probably sensed that you knew you had something here. Well, we, we really were, were hopeful this was going to be a success. We really didn't have any idea. We didn't do a lot of sophisticated research that, that broadcasters would do mm -hmm. uh, then and now, even more sophisticated today. We didn't, uh, we didn't do a 5,000 telephone call out and ask people, would you listen to this if we did it? And some of the typical right. things that you would do today. Sure. Uh, probably more seat of the pants than anything else, so we were only hopeful that it would happen. And then as it took off, we realized soon on that, uh, whoa, that we've got something people really like. And we're having such a great time with it. I mean, the staff had good time developing the product and executing it and producing it, and the audience had a great time being part of it. And the bands seemed to follow. Well, yeah, we were probably one of the only stations in the country that uh, were really giving support to these kinds of bands. Nobody in the country would play them. I say nobody. College stations played them. Right. But um, I, I don't think there was three or four other, more than three or four other commercial radio stations in the country that would give support to these, uh, to these bands. We talked about the image of the station and uh, how you've been here from the beginning. There is a perceived image of us. How close to the perceived image is the true image of what our audience is about? Well, it depends on who you talk to. Uh, you know, if you talk to an older conservative person, they make judgments based on the length of people's hair. Right. Or the fact they wear an earring or have a tattoo, and uh, they, they take one look at that and they have an immediate negative opinion. Uh, but generally, our audience has been uh, widely accepted, and as time went on, it became more normal than, than, uh, than unique. The bumper sticker t-shirt phenomenon. Mm -hmm. Did you ever did you ever think it was going to go as far no. as it, it it went where where we had uh, the Gulf War situation and we were getting pictures back of uh, uh, missiles that were going to be sent over to uh, to Saddam Hussein with KNAC stickers on it? People bands reporting back that they were traveling all over the world and hearing uh, and seeing T-shirts. Mm -hmm. uh, no, the, the the bumper sticker T-shirt thing was uh, was completely unexpected. Our bumper stickers are in every continent in the world. Uh, a friend of mine is a doctor. He did some missionary work in uh, it's literally deep, dark middle of Africa. He gets up one morning, comes out of his tent, and a supply truck is coming in to bring in supplies, and there was a KNAC bumper sticker on the front bumper of the truck. Uh, the Wall of China, uh, ski lifts in Switzerland, South America, everywhere, KNAC bumper stickers. Russia. Yeah. And what's even more amazing, when you t take that aspect and put it up next to the fact that we virtually have a signal that doesn't even make it right. to the San Fernando Valley, that's what makes it even more amazing yeah, about the stickers. You can't hear it in Woodland Hills, but the bumper sticker is all over the world. Unbelievable. Uh, how viable is Pure Rock today as far as a sales uh, tool if someone else were to... Were to, were to take the ball from here well music is continually evolving and as music evolves so do radio stations and uh, the music scene has changed a great deal since pure rock was at its at its peak right um, if we were able to move this radio station and i wish we could but it doesn't seem likely uh, i think what we're doing today would do very well in los angeles with a full signal that covered all of la and orange county uh, we move along as as the evolution of music moves along. Right. We, we move together, so the radio station changes as as things out in the street change. Yeah, it's less it's less heavy metal now and more hard music. I well, think. Well, so many of the heavy metal bands have broken up. Right. right? They're not around anymore. They're not recording. Uh, it, it, that's that scene is pretty much over, and uh, and the new scene is starting. Right. Uh, one final one final thing, if you could maybe share one or two funny stories or great experiences that you've had over the last nine years or I kind of caught you off guard here. Yeah, but you did. Um, uh, one of the things that I recall uh, fun 
finally was the uh, fifth anniversary concert with Ozzy Osbourne at the Long Beach Arena. Mm, great show. Uh, I think Alice in Chains opened that show. In fact, I believe that was one of Alice in Chains' first Southern California appearances. Uh, I, I'm sure there'll be people in town who will argue with me, but I think we might have been the first station to play Alice in Chains. We were the first station to play a long list of bands who went on to do very, very well in the music business. Uh, to answer your question, the anniversary show with Ozzy was, was, was very special. Uh, and we did hundreds and hundreds of smaller uh, promotional events that, uh, that were extremely successful and fun. Uh, the last Beach Fest, 44,000 oh. people, people turned away, uh, was a fabulous day. Um, you know, raising, raising food for Thanksgiving for, for those who needed it. And uh, just, just uh, you know, we, we probably donated, Children of the Night probably received three or $400,000 from KNAC over the first five or six years we were in business based on the anniversary concerts because they got the net proceeds. Right. And uh, we were feeling really good about that as well. Well, I want to thank you for joining us this morning. We're going to be also talking to Jimmy Christopher, who was the first program director, right. mm -hmm. and uh, Bill Banks, who has been at your side through the yeah, whole... Our uh, operations director. He was, uh, he was here, I guess, uh, I came in 84, and I think Bill must have been here since uh, 78, I think. Yeah. So he really knows the history of KNAC. And we will talk to him about that in just a little bit. One final thing, uh, you're a big Grand Prix uh, fan. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. How, how are you going to get into the Grand Prix for free next year? I mailed a check. Ah. I bought my tickets like everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> and it really was oh, depressing. That hurt, didn't it? <laughs> Thanks a lot, Gary, and uh, uh, good well, luck in the future. Well, it's been a, uh, it's been a good run, and I want to thank you for doing the fabulous job on our uh, our morning show on Sunday. It's a show with a big following and uh, something that everybody has enjoyed through the years. And thank you for the good job you've done. Thanks, Gary. All right. We asked Rob Halford, frontman extraordinaire for Judas Priest and Fight, just what exactly it feels like hearing his music on KNAC. I tell you, it's the biggest rush in the world to hear music on the radio. It's the biggest trip, man, to be in a car on the freeway or, or anywhere to hear your music coming on the radio. It's, it's just, it's, it's a blast. 1986 to 1995. Yeah, in those nine years, we've blown out a hell of a lot of tweeters, too. Just ask Rob. It's, it's just, it's, it's a blast. 105.5 KNAC. 7.37, this is Sunday Morning Pure Rock Talkback. Mike Stark with you until 9 o'clock, a very special edition of Pure Rock Talkback as we look back at the history of of KNAC through the uh, words and music and and air checks of the past nine years. And uh, we will be uh, doing that until 9 o'clock. Your phone calls are invited. Your thoughts on KNAC, when we can work those in to the the mix we're doing this morning, we'll, we want to hear from you. Area code 310-437-KNAC, 714-534-KNAC. This is Nolan Harrison of the Los Angeles Raiders, and you're listening to Mike Stark on KNAC's Pure Rock Talkback. KNAC. AC. Winners of the Super Bowl of Rock and Roll for nine consecutive years. The legend lives on. Lives on. Lives on. It's meant a lot to us in the fact that, uh, to me, it's, I remember the first time I came to California, uh, that was all I did is sit around my hotel room and listen to KNAC. It was the first time I listened to a radio station that blew me away. Good music on the radio. Great music. The true term, pure rock. That's where it came from, KNAC. Well, I think a lot of people are going to miss it, and hopefully the... We'll miss it when we come through. Uh, pure rock. One old five point. There they go. Kingdom Come has taken the stage. The Monsters of Rock is underway. This is KNAC. KNAC is there at the biggest pure rock events. People are streaming down onto the floor of the Coliseum. Look at that. It's crazy. There is an absolute solid mass of people in the, covering the entire Coliseum floor to about the 50-yard line from the stage. It's nuts here. Metallica is on stage. This is the Monsters of Rock on KNAC. Lars, that was very interesting. It was like 10,000 raging, I want to say fuck, but I can't because I'm on live. But um, it was 10,000 raging freaks just towering towards us. That was brilliant, man. <laughs>
Live from the Monsters of Rock. Let's go backstage. Tom, yes, are you there? This is the Red Rocker. We're getting ready to go on. I'm feeling a lot better. I hope I can sing. Ow! KNAC does rock. I've been listening to y'all all day. Pure Rock KNAC, your number one concert connection. This is Bill Gazzari, the godfather of rock and roll. I'm listening to Norm McBride on KNAC in Long Beach. We call him Storm and Norman. You really don't want to know why we call him Storm and Norman, but I strongly suggest you don't refuse to listen. I am Denial, the Reverend Jimmy Bragger. Thank you. Brothers and sisters, I come before you today because I have sinned. Yes, I come before you to admit that I love the organ. Yes, and I love the guitar and the drums and the pound and throb and sound of the bass. And I even sent away for a KNAC P-Rock bumper sticker. But no, no. This is not my greatest sin. My greatest sin is I have not put it on my bumper. I just sit there and look at it and look and look. <laughs> Friends, don't hide your belief. Devote yourself today. Send for your KNAC. P-Rock proper sticker. 100 Ocean Gate Boulevard, Suite E70, Long Beach 90802. Hello, this is Lemmy from Motorhead. You know, the ugly ones. And you're getting off, apparently, with the leather non torn mastery on Pure Rock 105.5 KNAC. I only wish you could see what she's dressed in right now. Well, hello. I'm Tom Mastery, the leather nun from KNAC Radio. No one else is able to come to the phone right now. They're just a little tied up. You've probably called to take your aggressions out on them anyway. Perhaps I can persuade you to take them out on me. Go ahead. Don't be shy. Talk to me. <laughs> FM Radio's Problem Child. Hey! hey! Pure Rock 105.5 KNAC. By the way, you're in tune with Pure Rock 105.5 KNAC Long Beach, Los Angeles. We're live at Tower Records on Sunset Boulevard in Hollywood. In honor of Skyscraper, David Lee Ross, brand new album. Okay, David is in position. He's gearing up and lowering himself, making sure that all the ropes are secure. Whoa, he's leaning back at a 90-degree angle from the side of the building and salutes the crowd with a grin, a grand grin on his face. The guy is a Hi, this is David Lee Ross. Don't touch that dial because you are listening to the loudest station in the nation, baby. 105.5 No Jive KNAC Long Beach, Los Angeles. Minasan, o genki desu ka? Note imasu ka? I sure hope so, headbangers. KNAC. Listening to a summit meeting between Soviet Party leader Gorbachev and President Bush. We want American Purok. Well, we're prepared to offer you the Beach Boys. Yet. Or yes. the ever-popular Barry Manilow. Yes, yes, yes. And I'm sure Helen Reddy would be ready. Here's our list. Ozzy Osbourne, Motley, Motley Crue, Bon Jovi, bon Jovi. Well, I, 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 I think you should drop some of your demands. Okay, we drop bomb. Uh, well, I, I don't think that would be prudent. In addition to rock bands, you will send us two American pure rockers to show us how to bang head. Well... Well, all right, but I must insist on two backstage passes for me and Barbara. <laughs> he say, <laughs> that's right, we're sending two lucky KNAC listeners to the Moscow Music and Peace Summit in the Soviet Union. Stay tuned to KNAC for all the details on how you can win. We're here live in Moscow broadcasting via satellite. I'm Tom Mastry. 
your host for the next 90 minutes of insanity. Speaking of insane, let's talk to Skid Rose Rachel about the, the fact that you're opening the show for 140,000 crazy Russian fans two days in a row. Uh, Are you shaking in your boots, buddy? To open something this big is pretty cool. I just hope we don't mess it up for everyone else because it's a little bad impression. It's kind of thing, you know. I, I had a lot of fun over there, you know, a real lot of fun. But the downside to it, like I was saying, is the way these people live. And you have to bring your own water because they have no water purifying systems over there. So it's like you drink the water. It's like... Straight I, I, from Chernobyl. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like you got a glow to you now. <laughs> Get to Hawaii to see the crew tear up the island. Your chance to win happens every hour all weekend long at KNAC. But, Buff, what is that fantasy? I promised I'd show them my little tattoo. Ah! <laughs> the choice of a crude generation. Pure Rock 105.5 KNAC. Would you please welcome 105.5. 24 hours a day, 365 days each f***ing year. 1986 to 1995. Pure Rock Flashback. Pure Rock 105.5 KNAC. This is Mike Stark. You're listening to a very special edition of Pure Rock Talkback. We're doing the history of KNAC. Who do I got here? You've got Mike. Mike, I understand you have a poem. Yes. Why don't you get laid on us? All right. It is how to surmise at the surprise, disillusionment, hear our cries. For it was bad enough when we lost the Met, but to shut down Pure Rock is harder yet. Wake, it'd wake us up hard and get us off at five, but even when you're gone, Pure Rock will survive. You opened our eyes to so many bands, a hard rock is station famed throughout the lands. I've played it loud and I've played it proud. We've shared it with our neighbors, whether they liked it or not. You played it hot. To Pure Rock, you were like a savior. We felt secure. We had no doubt. But lo and behold, we've been sold out. Pass on to the top our discontent. Please explain it to him what Pure Rock meant. Say it straight. Say it with a smile. Explain it to him, doggy style. Mike, that was beautiful, man. <laughs> Thanks, brother. Hey, keep, play it hard to the end, man, and uh, go out with a bang. All right, buddy. All right. Thank you. See ya. All right, we'll be right back. 7.55, this is Sunday Morning Pure Rock Talk, back a special edition of the show as we look at the history of KNAC. We're going to take a few phone calls while we're at it. Good morning, who's this? This is Al. Al, how are you? I haven't heard from you in a long time. How you doing? Yeah, I'm doing okay. I still listen to you guys every Sunday. Just don't call in as much. I'm really, really, really appalled that you guys are going off the air. But, you know, those things happen, unfortunately. Well, I really will miss the station. Uh, I think there's not too many radio stations around that uh, uh, pay play uh, the edge music, so to speak. Uh, you know, if you look at if you look at uh, rap, rap is pretty much off of the air. Practically, it is off the air. Hardcore jazz is off the air. Not hardcore rock is off the air. That's all we're left with is middle of the road stuff. And it seems to me that as this country gets more right winged. You know, I think that that has something to do with 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 the mode and thought that people are into, the kind of expression that 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 we as um, um, artists are are geared towards. You know, um, money, 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 and I think it needs to be more radio stations like KNEC and other uh, stations that play. I won't say alternative music, but somewhat it is. It is. You know, uh, you don't. I like to, you know, to hear the good hard rock, um, um, and I'm going to miss it. 
And um, well, Al, you you sum, you sum up pretty much what most of our listeners have said uh, to us on the phones over the last couple months. And uh, uh, you have been a, a a great supporter of this station, a great supporter of this show, and I I really appreciate it. And I know that the attitude is going to continue. Doesn't right. matter. You know, this is just a broadcast transmitter that's uh, going away. Mm-hmm. But the attitude of the people will will continue on. And, Al, I appreciate uh, all of your thoughts over the years. Yeah, because, see, for me, you know, it was the light of someone connecting with, with uh, uh, white college, uh, uh, a little bit more than college age individuals. Uh, I live in Watts, and, 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 and it's, uh, um, I really don't come in contact with a, with a lot of white folks at all. But with KNAC, I somewhat had a, um, uh, um, a vehicle that I could tap in, you know, on a Sunday right. morning talk back. I could hear what you guys were thinking, and you guys could hear what I was thinking or whatever. And uh, I'm going to really, really miss that. It's too bad that uh station has to go off, but uh, all I can say is just that, I mean, rock still lives on. Thanks, Al. I appreciate your call, and I appreciate all your support over the years, man. Take care. All right, brother. Bye. See ya. All right, back to it. The history of KNAC. KNAC. Winners of the Super Bowl of Rock and Roll for nine consecutive years. The legend lives on. Lives on. Lives on. What happened was me and Duff um, came up here and did our first sort of uh, on the air kind of live thing. And then on the way home, we heard uh, something from Live Like a Suicide. I think it was Move to the City Mm -hmm. in the van on the way back. And that was a great feeling, you know, because that was the first time we'd ever heard ourselves on the radio. Pure Rock 105. Okay, we're on Pure Rock Talkback. Mike Stark with you on a Sunday morning. And joining us in studio is Bill Banks, who is presently the operations director here at KNAC. But uh, you started out here many, many, many moons ago. Many, You're... many moons ago. And uh, what, when did you start out? What was your first position here? And what was the format at the, t- at the time? Oh, boy. When I first started out, I did just part-time news, uh, weekends and then afternoons and... Uh, I think in December of 1976, I became news director. And the format at that time in 1976? Was, uh, AOR, album rock. Okay, and news and director, you were doing mornings, I would assume. Yes. And who was, <laughs> who was the morning man when you started up? When I started, boy, I worked with Ron McCoy at a, for a time. Now, Ron was here many years yeah. doing mornings. Then he went away for a while, then came back. He came back. And then you went on to uh, work with Norm McBride, who was the next longest-running jock, I would think. Mm -hmm. Uh, Were there any others in between that? Uh, In the mornings, um, oh, uh, Denise Westwood. Oh, really? For for a while. No kidding. She did mornings. So uh, it was pretty much a straight AOR format at that time. Yeah. And And back in those, that was... In the old days of radio, when the jocks would pull their own records, the you, progressive you'd have years. kind of a format yeah. to follow that uh, you'd play a certain category. You know, albums would be categorized right. for the type of sound. The, the jocks had more freedom than to whatever mood struck them. Right. And uh, you were doing news in the mornings. What what was the style of news that you were having to do at that time? Because it, it, it was a different time news-wise as well. Mm-hmm. It was... Uh, more or less straight news, but with the rock and roll Feel. attitude. Yeah. Yeah, so it wasn't, uh, now the news, blah, right. blah, blah. I mean, it was human beings you know, telling the news what was going on to the uh, human being listeners. Um, and then the format, the next format change, or the real format change, came uh, with the rock and rhythm. Right. right? And mm-hmm. what that year was early that? early 80s. Um, Probably 81, 82. And at that time, KNAC was playing uh, a lot of the same music K-Rock was playing, but a lot more cutting edge than K-Rock was mm-hmm. at that time. Right. And uh, mm-hmm. at that time, it was Norm McBride yep. was doing mornings with you. I'm trying to get this in a somewhat chronological order. Um, now, you have worked with Ron McCoy, Norm McBride, 
Uh, and then Thrasher came in. Yes. So you've worked with a number of morning people, uh, and then some others that worked in between there. I think the Lobster. Lobster. You, you worked with worked Lobster. With mm -hmm. Got any great stories that uh, you want to relate on any of those? Uh, <laughs> any of those uh, that uh, you know they're funny or well, the one Thrasher and I were talking about just the other day when he first came here. Uh, within for several weeks when he came, uh, we had one of our big earthquakes. Um, right. I forget which one that was now. Maybe the Woody earthquake. No, that was that was just a couple years ago, so I guess Landers before that. But it was a big solid earthquake and yeah, as news director, I'd gone to seminars a lot on the big quake sure. and what to do and what radio stations would be doing. And this thing, early in the morning, just started shaking like crazy <laughs> and it didn't stop. Right. So, you know, my first thought is, this is the big one. Right. And Thrasher's on the air, and he just came from Florida. This was his first earthquake. He didn't know what to do. And the station went off the air, you know, because of all the shaking. Sure. You lose the link to the transmitter. And he was sitting there trying, messing with the controls, trying to get the station back on the air. And the place is just shaking like crazy. <laughs> and I'm in the newsroom next to him. We have the windows, but the doors, you know, you can't see it. And I'm motioning for him to get under the doorway. <laughs> you know, we're off the air. We're going right. to be off the air. He didn't get it. No. <laughs> well, you know, I, I experience that on a daily basis as well. But now he knows what yeah. uh, earthquakes are like. He's been through a few on the air. Now, so you did the rock and rhythm days, and then you work with Thrasher for a little bit. And then uh, the station decided that news was a secondary thing, and you became operations director at that time, as well as news director for what little news we, we did. We still did news. Uh, Anna Lee started doing news. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Anna Lee came in and started doing news, and you became the operations director here. Mm -hmm. Had that chance to uh, move on and do something else after doing news and getting up at 4.30 in the morning for half my life, you know. 20 years of that gets... Now, I've done it for a year, and now <laughs> you and I have talked off the air about this. Uh, you never get used to it. No, you? it's a different life. When you get up at 4.30, you drive to work in the dark, and <laughs> you don't know what the day is like until you know, 9, 10 o'clock. Finally, you're off the air. You walk outside. Oh, it's sunny today. Or, it's raining. I right. didn't know that. <laughs> exactly. Now, as operations director, uh, you have a number of duties around here part of part of them is the making sure that we are legal in every possible way and the other the other aspect that uh, that you handle around here is basically pure rock talkback you have handled that from from the very beginning from we start when yeah when we switched to uh, the pure rock format when we started talkback yeah and basically you uh, you keep track of the calls and and keep track of everything and it's all computerized our listeners probably don't, aren't even aware of that uh, Bill logs in every call and it's put into our public file as a uh, as uh, part of our public service to the community. Mm -hmm. Every station has to do this. You, stations are required to serve the community. And that's how uh, Talkback started when we switched to uh, the Pure Rock. We weren't really sure who the listeners were, what they were interested in. So we thought, well, here's a way to find out. We'll just go on the air and ask them. Right. You know, let them call in and tell us what they care about now prior to the pure rock format there there was a talk show in that time slot was there not or uh in the past we had done talk shows we've done interview shows a lot of different types of things but nothing well we did have a talk show but not quite this format right the pure rock so when pure rock before. started we started the pure rock talkback show and uh, do you remember who the first host was jim petty john oh okay Pine yeah Pine. and he had worked at knac before right as a jock and under various names. Right, <laughs> right. And that's when everybody had a wacky name, mm -hmm. except for you. You maintained your news. Uh, yeah, I was always just me. Just Bill Banks. <laughs> and then after uh, Jim left, it was... Uh, then Anna Lee. Anna Lee. And then... Uh, and you. No, how about Gary? Oh, Gary Griff. That's right. Right. Uh, Gary did it after Jim. Okay, so it was Jim, Gary, then Anna Lee, and then there was an interim period where just about anybody that wanted to do it did it. <laughs> I think it was mainly Phil Hewlett, though. Yeah, he did it for uh, a few filthy weeks. Filthy Phil did it for a few weeks, and then uh, then I was brought on board, and I've been Bill's nightmare ever since. Uh, <laughs> now, this brings up an interesting uh, uh, statistic. Bill Banks is the only person that has heard every talkback show. Mm-hmm. From the first day that they did talk back, back in, you know, 86 or whatever. Right. Which is amazing. 
That is that is an unbelievable. See, that's something your listeners don't know. They don't know who I am, but I know every single one of them <laughs> <laughs> intimately. <laughs> yes, intimately, whether you wanted to or not. And uh, you know, we we've talked many times about some of our fine fine uh, regular callers. Um, but anyway, Bill is the only one that is, has has listened to every talkback, and he should get a, an award just for that. <laughs> Now, let's talk a little bit about uh, something I know you love. Oh, boy. The Grand Prix. Oh, yeah. The Grand Prix. Now, uh, That's what kept me in Long Beach. That really, <laughs> I, I believe that, actually. Now, you told me last year at the Grand Prix that KNAC is the only station that has been at the Grand Prix from the very first race. Right, from, what, 75, when they did the original uh, Formula 5000 race? Right. I think that was 75. And you were there uh, broadcasting I, I was van? No, because I wasn't uh, at KNAC at that time. I, w I was working for a newspaper. Okay. The first two races I did for a newspaper, but KNAC was there, the operation they had at the time. In fact, uh, Jay Hector, who has still done the races right. with us, he was working them at that time. That's amazing. And but in a van, yeah, a little you know Ford van you'd rent out or something. We did this for years. When they, the race still came up on Ocean Boulevard, right. and the uh, start-finish line was at Long Beach Boulevard, and they had a big grandstand there for the announcers, and we would park this little van behind that grandstand and run our cables <laughs> and everything to that. And this was... The days before it's organized now where you have the computerized sure. timing and scoring and you get information, you know, the way we've set up the last several sure. years, you have your TV monitor in front of you, the timing monitor, so you know what's going on. Back then, we were in this van <laughs> with a little table and a folding chair, and I would sit there, and then we would have Jay Hector and some of the other people. We'd just throw a crew together right. with two-way radios, walkie-talkies were scattered around, and they would give the information to me on these two-way radios. I was sitting in a van. I had no idea what was going on. I didn't have a monitor. I couldn't hear even the PA system. You could have been on the other side of the world. For, yeah, I could have done yeah. this from home. Right. For, <laughs> and it was the crew that we would have on the two-way radios who would actually be out there on the track, you know, counting the cars as they went by to know who was in first place. Right. And we'd do it almost like the old Indy 500 days. You sure. Know, now to turn one, now to turn five. Right. And so every year, and then, uh, so you watched the change from Formula One to Indy cars and saw the whole uh, change, and, and as the years progressed, the broadcast got more elaborate, more sophisticated, mm -hmm. to the point where we were uh, last year doing, uh, uh, the last few years doing uh, pretty much lap-by-lap -lap coverage in between the music. Right. Yeah. And so. we, in a case like that, we said, now with the monitors and everything, you know what was going on, you right. could give a little more detailed information. So my final question to you will be the same one I asked Gary Price. Now that we don't work here anymore or won't work here when the Grand Prix uh, happens, how, are you going to pay? <laughs> how do we get there? I don't know. Yeah. Are you going to pay? Gary said his check's in the mail already. Yeah, got to do something. I've yeah. been to everyone, so got to keep up that uh, record. Well, Bill, it's been great working with you over the last uh, five plus years that I've been here. Bill has, uh, has uh, if there was any censorship that was going to go on in this radio station it would have come from bill banks and i got to tell you right now over the last five years i have never been censored for anything that i've done on the air and i appreciate your tolerance uh, many times there's there were probably times when i should have been uh, uh should have been stopped but uh, i appreciate your tolerance and and uh, your understanding of what free speech is all about and thanks for uh, all the all the great years of working with you yeah it was always fun and that's what we do we talk about what's going on so you can't censor that. Right. Thanks, Bill. Thank you. It is time for another skeleton from KNAC's closet. If you can't party with the big boys, then don't turn us on. Pure Rock 105.5 KNAC. It's Scorpions New Year's Eve on 105.5 KNAC. Oh, yeah. We got Paul on the phone, I think. 105.5 KNAC. Dangerous, Darren, here. Paul, are you there? Darren! Hey. <laughs> Believe it? Good. You got a what? You got a party going on. But it is raging in here. Happy New Year's. 
Hey, Happy New Year, Paul. And uh, Darren. Yep. You know, you only get like 40% on that unemployment check. <laughs> don't say that, bud. Hopefully the boss will never find out if you don't say anything. Can't live with me, pal. <laughs> this ain't no watered-down pansy-ass Wimp Rock Radio. <laughs> this is Pure Rock 105.5 KNAC. KNAC's Easy Money Thursday could put 105 bucks in your pocket. But it's not just about the money anymore. There's a lot more at stake here. What are you driving there, dude? <laughs> not much. That could all change if you win Easy Money on KNAC. Because we're also giving away a 1990 Toyota pickup. That's it. All right. But that's not all. Do you know how to ski? No. Don't worry. You'll learn. Because we just threw new skis. Skis, poles, and bindings into the back of the truck, along with $500 in lift tickets. All right. You got to be me. Why in the hell would I kid about something like this, man? That's too much, man. It's too much. It's not enough. We add more to it every week. And it just keeps growing and growing. Who knows what we'll add next week? Uh, I don't know yet. Well, tell me something you do know. Can I see your rocks? My buns off. Southern California's Pure Rock, 105.5 KNAC, Long Beach, Los Angeles, happening live from Tower Video on the Sunset Strip in Hollywood. We're just mere moments away from the arrival of the Batmobile here at Tower Video on Sunset. Only in Hollywood will you see the Batmobile drive down Sunset Boulevard with a police escort. Cruising into Tower Video, driven by the Joker. I want to know, how did the Joker get the keys to the Batmobile, ladies and gentlemen? How is this possible? It's around in the corner of Larrabee and Sunset right now, cruising in. I see Dangerous Darren getting ready to get in the KNAC Pure Rock Patrol van. Hey, Darren, can you get a second? Dangerous Darren, dude. Hi, guys. What do you think of this car? Oh, man, it's amazing, isn't it? I don't know how they ever get it past the smog check, man. <laughs> I got a 65 Ford, and they give me a hard time about it. You know it. I mean, we got a nice van, but it doesn't shoot flame, you know? Not yet. We're working on We're it. We're working on that, yeah. After we blow up the engine. If Gotham City. Trouble. Where's Batman? This is your on-the-beat reporter, Dick Inhand. Everyone's asking, where's Batman? But I'd like to know, where's Robin? Here's a man that looks a lot like Ronald McDonald. Tell me, sir, what do you think happened to the boy wonder? I guess the little guy got tired of going down on the bat pole. <laughs> Who the hell knows what went on in that bat room? Wait a minute. You're the Joker. Yeah, and you must be the king of farts. Tell me, Mr. Joker, sir, what do you hate most about the Cape Crusader? I'd have to say it's that bat breath. No wonder he wears that freaking mask. He makes garlic smell like Lavoris. How do you think he gets his superhuman strength? KNAC Pure Rock bumper stickers on everything. His Batmobile, Batplane, hell, he probably even wears a sticker on his bat shorts. Holy metalhead! You two can get your Pure Rock bumper sticker from your same bat station, KNAC. Wait till they get a look at you. Celebrity voices in person. Yes, indeed, it is St. Patrick's Day here at the Marquee in Westminster. Dangerous of Darren, Long St. Paul, we're doing it to you, man. We'll keep Wait. you going. Oh, you got something to say? Hang on a second, man. I'm at the bar. Where are you? I got it. Dangerous of Darren, Darren. Long St. Paul is somewhere. You know, you you people are getting louder and louder as the day goes on, you know? Okay. Okay. I love it. Wow. I was at the bar, man. I'm sorry. Okay, what do you want? Is that it? I got a limerick for you. Check it out. With regard to a man named Calhoun, girls complain that he finished too soon. It start the foreplay in the first half of May, yet would never last far into June. Oh! Let's go, people, man. Dr. Vine, this is the big F. It is 105.5 KNAC. Incredible values on now at Cheapo Mart. Microwave ovens, $5. Home stereos, $10. Big screen.
Brand new, brand name merchandise. No demos, no stolen stuff. We sell everything at up to 50, 60, 70, 80% off our cost. Why? Do we do it to save you money? To beat the competition? To clear out our extra inventory? No. We do it because we're idiots. And we've got no idea of how to run a business. And now, if you find a lower advertised price, we'll buy it for you. Not only that, we'll buy one for every member of your family. So come on down. Before creditors seize our assets and board up the windows. Sheep Walmart with eight convenient locations all in Ugaiba. If it costs more than you can afford and you don't feel like stealing it, go, go to Sheep Walmart. <laughs> K-N-A-C. Let me be your home. Time once again to squeal for the goods for a pig's favorite TV game show, Squeal of Fortune. This is for the big uh, big prizes here, Scorpion tickets for the sold-out show on the 8th. First contestant is Steve from La Mirada. Yeah, what's going on, Phil? You got some kind of creative squeal for me today, Steve? Well, not really, but we'll see what we can do. Thanks a lot, man. I'm counting on you. Okay. Hey, Rookie, watch me pull a pig out of my head. Oh, Dan! But that trick never works. This time for sure. Nothing up my sleeve. This do. you. Celebrity voices impersonated. <laughs> kind of curly. Thank you very much. Okay, next we got Snowman in Long Beach. Yeah, dude. <laughs> like, what's happening, dude? Uh, I think I want to squeeze that piggy. Let's do it. Come here, little piggy. Big squeeze. Hey, that was really terrific. Why do you do those things so true to life? I don't know how you do it. <laughs> uh, is it him? Is it him? I think the winner is a Snowman in Long Beach. Yeah, finally. Which radio station makes you squeal for the goods? <laughs> Filthy Phil, out of here. I finally finished the show. We did it. You are super Phil old sport. <laughs> beautiful. I think I love you. Lori Freeze next. It's 105.5 KNAZ. of the Super Bowl of Rock and Roll for nine consecutive years. The legend lives on. Lives on. Lives on. And I think it's unfortunate that a lot of kids are going to be really disappointed. I know I will be. So, like I was saying earlier, it's back to my old ACDC records now, you know, <laughs> which means I have to fumble through the, in, the, in my glove box to find a CD that's cool because there's no radio stations really to listen to if I want to listen to that kind of thing other than KNEC. I live in Southern California, so that's, that's the, the, you know, end, be all, end all deal. Though. Pure Rock 105. <laughs> Okay, we're on Pure Rock Talkback. This is Mike Stark, and joining me on the phone now, from where, Jimmy? In uh, chilly Cleveland, Ohio, Mike. <laughs> Cleveland, Ohio. The very first program director of Pure Rock, Jimmy Christopher. Jimmy Armored St. St. Christopher, right? That's correct. Right. I've been called that for a long time. Yeah. You were here when it... Actually, you were here before Pure Rock started, right? Yeah, I came to KNAC in 1979. Actually, it was January 19th of 1979, I believe, was my first day there. So that was uh, a little over 16 years ago. <laughs> That's amazing. So you went through... Uh, you were here during the uh, rock and rhythm days? Uh, yeah, we took it rock and rhythm in the early 80s and did that for five or six years and then... What, nine years and a couple of weeks ago, uh, switch it to Pure Rock on uh, January 8th, 1986. Right. Now, you're the one who initiated the uh, rock and rhythm as well, right? That is correct, sir. So before that, they, uh, KNAC, even though a very cutting-edge station to that point, uh, you took it away from the AOR, the straight AOR format, and went with, I guess, what could be termed alternative. Uh, that, yeah, that's right, Mike. We, uh, at the time, Fleetwood Mac, Allman Brothers, whatever, wasn't really cutting it with KMET and KLOS, the kingpins in L.A. Uh, this was even before the advent of, uh, of KROQ, 
we did the rock and rhythm thing, and our uh, logo was in tune with the 80s. Six months after we uh, did that, or shortly thereafter, K-Rock did their rock of the 80s thing, and since they were in uh, Pasadena with a little bigger signal, a little closer to L.A., kind of stole a little bit of our thunder, but we hung in with the rock and rhythm format for, like I said, five or six years, and then decided to switch it nine years ago to, uh, to pure rock. Well, as I was alluding to before, uh, KNAC has always been on the cutting edge of whatever they do. It just happens the last nine years has been pure rock. But as a listener, I grew, I went to college here in uh, the early 70s. And even in the AOR days, they were always a little further out there, always pushing the envelope just a little bit more than, than the other stations in town. Right. When uh, the Hardens originally bought the station, and I believe it was 69, sometime in the late 60s, uh, I think Bill Clay was the first program director. He was followed by Ronnie McCoy, who you probably remember. Sure. Did mornings here for years with Bill Banks. Right, exactly. When I did, uh, when I first came to California in the early 70s, I remember I was at a friend's uh, someplace high in the, the hills of Malibu, up, you know, across the, uh, the Santa Monica Bay there. And I remember listening to KNAC. And at that time, as you, as you alluded to, it was uh, very progressive. This is even before the term AOR. Right. That was in the Bill Clay days. And then Ronnie McCoy, whom I met when uh, I moved to California in the early 70s, he was still at, uh, at KNAC. He moved back to Dallas temporarily and then came back. He was uh, not in a management position when I was there. He was just doing an afternoon drive. But Paul Four was the program director. Mm -hmm me out of Houston, and uh, that was 16 years ago, and then I came to KNAC to do 7 to Midnight to replace Bill Bennett. I don't know if you remember that. Sure. That's funny. Okay, let's let's go to 1986. Uh, things musically were starting to change here in town. Uh, the radio stations in town were changing. How did the idea for the Pure Rock format come about? What were the musical factors of the time that signaled that the time was right? Well, at the end of the 80s, I'd say like fall of 85 or so, Gary and I, Gary Price, the GM, uh, who's a uh, dead ringer for Walter Matthau, and I kidded him. <laughs> I met him 10, 10 or 11 years ago. I said, he does look like Walter Matthau. But uh, he and I had sat down and talked about some uh, alternative formats other than the, uh, the rock and rhythm at that time, because we were basically just plodding along with a small fraction of the ratings, doing okay in Orange County, but we figured there was something else there, both from a sales standpoint and from a programming standpoint. And at that time, I put together a uh, presentation for uh, for Gary and the owner, Fred Sands, uh, which basically turned out to be a classic rock format. And we kicked around that idea. Uh, we figured uh, Spanish would be good, but none of us could speak Spanish. And we wanted to rock, you know. <laughs> That's funny. Long Beach, for a number of years, I knew that was a niche in the, in the, in the market. I knew Long Beach was, was a very rock and roll town, as was uh, Southern California, essentially L.A. And so Gary and I had been discussing that, and he finally uh, asked, well, what is it, Christopher? And I said, hey, if we want to, uh, I'm sure the sales will follow, but if you want to increase the ratings, let's, uh, you know, let's kick ass, let's play pure rock. And then Jeff Pollack at the time, the uh, L.A. consultant, um, knew somebody, knew Fred, or knew somebody through Fred, and he was uh, brought in as a consultant to do... Uh, pure rock thing as a consultant and i'm not sure if he's done any more but at that time he only did that one and it was knac so we decided to uh, flip it and uh, the rest is history as they say gary told me i interviewed gary earlier today and gary told me a funny story about uh the day or two before when you were up at the tower record stores do you remember that right yeah i, I remember that uh very well, as a matter of fact, Nikki and I had taken the the station van at the time. Again, this was this was around the holidays, probably in December of '85, toward the end of the year. And uh, we wanted to make this as much of a surprise as possible, and that uh, meant we couldn't get the record companies involved. Because so we started ordering backlogs of Van Halen and and the Black Sabbath and whoever Dio and. Um, 
the rainbow, I mean, they'd obviously be going, well, you know, KNAC is changing format. So we wanted to, uh, you know, use it as a surprise. We didn't want to blow our cover. So Nikki and I took the van up to a tower on Sunset that day in December, and <laughs> we had our whole list, and we're going through all the records, and we're piling them up. <laughs> and all these long-haired uh, clerks are... Uh, we're taking care of us. They're going, geez, this is <laughs> this is this is a heavy library. What are you going to do? And we said, well, uh, we know a guy who uh, owns a station in Utah. And we're just putting together a library for him. Not really revealing our cover, but I think it was kind of obvious when we had started loading up the records in the van. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Hey, that it was for KNAC, and I think they might have bought it. And then a few weeks later, we did uh, we sprung it and made that that change. I remember Big Rick, who was the jock on the air at the time, playing "God Save the Queen" as the last song, and then he went into uh, Wild Bill Scott, who had this big long preamble is called the wild man fisher had this uh this bit that uh wild bill would play at the beginning of each show and he came on with that and then a collage of all songs that uh, included the words rock and roll and then right into uh, acdc it's a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll and even at this moment mike as we're talking about it nine years later i still get shivers and the hair stands up on my neck i mean that's how how potent and powerful it was at that time and then rob lipschitz from uh jeff pollock's office and I were literally doing each hour of music by hand mm. or, you know, going through the, the and, and putting it in because we didn't have the computer up or, or established as yet. And we, I stayed till I think, daybreak the next morning, five or six or seven in the morning with Rob doing the next day's, you know, 24 hours of music. That's amazing. That's amazing. How'd you uh, decide on all of the wacky names that you came up with for the jocks? Yeah, I think those just kind of fell into place. Um, you know, I was, I'm Jimmy Christopher, and the Saint has always been my nickname, and uh, Armored Saint was the East L.A. band, and they were one of our first interviews, and I think they were talking, was it Sam Freeze, the Freeze disease? Somebody, whoever the, the jock was on the air, and I was kind of doing a, a, a co-interview with them, and they just started calling me the Armored Saint, which was later... Uh, Hispanic eyes, to Spanish eyes by Jaime El Santo Ar Armaduro, which is Armored Saints uh, in Spanish. And but for the other names, uh, Scotty uh, was Scorching Scotty, and he'd start a show with the uh, with the fire burning and the, this this hideous laugh, this wicked laugh. Uh, Paul Long, we just flipped his name to Long Paul. <laughs> Yeah. A ton mastery was the leather nun. Uh of course Thrasher came then and uh and, and was Thrasher. Uh Lady Die, this um uh an English gal. Uh so that was obvious with Lady Die. Uh who else did we have? We had uh Gonzo Greg, obviously and Wild Bill as I mentioned in front. Right. Um you mentioned some of the bands. What were some of the other bands that were hot at that time? Great White, definitely, and Metallica. I think we were the first station in the country to play Metallica, not only, I mean, not in only in lunar rotation, as a lot of stations did then, but hey, they were a staple of the KNAC format. You could hear them 6 a.m. in the morning, 6 p.m. at night, on weekends, and afternoon drive. As I later moved to Kiss in San Antonio, they were pretty much a hard rocking station, but it was more a uh, standard AOR. Uh, Judas Priest was a big group, Motley Crue, Wasp. Um, as I said, Great White, Ronnie, uh, James Dio, uh, Ozzy and Black Sabbath, uh, Bon Jovi, when they were first starting out, um, Guns N' Roses. I remember Guns N' Roses literally chasing me around the first anniversary party at KNAC, which was a year after. It was in 87. And uh, we sold out the palace, and it was a thing for our listeners. <clears throat> We invited record company people and artists and A&R and &R guys and PR guys and managers. And we had a great turnout with the bands. I know Great White Headline and then the winner, winner of the Pure Rock Wars at that time. It was a promotion we were doing on a, on a yearly basis. Uh, I can't recall the name of the band that won, but they were they opened for Great White. And all the guys who were there, including Vince Neal and uh, a bunch of other names, uh, got up on stage and jammed with Great White at the end. But I remember Guns N' Roses, we, we invited right in the party but they wanted uh, they wanted to play and jam and i remember they, they, they literally chasing me around the, the palace and even in the parking lot uh, uh wanting to uh to get into the into the festivities but that was very memorable i really enjoyed that the first anniversary of your rock party 
Well, Jimmy, I appreciate you taking the time to spend with us uh, this morning and uh, reminisce about uh, your early days uh, at KNAC, and uh, good luck to you in the future. Mike, I thank you very much. Same to you guys. It's uh, sad that it's coming to an end, as we alluded to earlier, the 25 years of progressive history for KNR and then the last nine. And those years will uh, definitely have a place in my memory banks. And, uh, and I miss everybody and say hi to Thrash Pie. 105.5 KNC. Remember. 1986 to 1995. You're rock. KNC. KNC. Winners of the Super Bowl of Rock and Roll for nine consecutive years. The legend lives on. Lives on. Lives on. Bob has been trying to get recognized out here on the West Coast for a long time, especially out in Southern California. And we really needed KNAC to help us gain a little bit more notoriety out in this part of the country. And uh, during this last prong record cleansing, they've been so supportive of us. And especially, it's bad for everybody losing like a pioneering station like KNAC. Pure Rock. One old If you're rocking dudes and Judettes, it's been a year since 105.5 KNAC broke it out larger than life and put the back into Southern California radio. And we are going to celebrate our first anniversary of Pure Rock. Boy, are we going to celebrate. On Friday, January 16th, Southern California's only true rock and roll radio station celebrates one year of true, pure, hard rock with a live remote broadcast from Hollywood, including tons of special prize giveaways and interviews with pure rock stars. Get ready for KNAC's fifth anniversary concert here tonight at Long Beach Arena. 5.5 KNAC welcomes Ozzy Osbourne with LA Gun and Lynch Mob all for one low price. Ozzy. Nobody rocks a stage like Ozzy Osbourne. And nobody rocks Southern California like KNAC. This Friday night at 7 at Long Beach Arena, produced by Avalon, KNAC's fifth anniversary concert with Ozzy and special guest LA Gun. Together with Lynch Mob. Plus surprises in the legendary KNAC All-Star Jam. And to thank you for pure rockin' with us, all tickets are only $15. Still with all ticket masters, including Music Plus and Make Company in the box of it. KNAC's fifth anniversary concert. The Osborne, LA Gun, Lynch Mob. All proceeds benefit children of the night. More fun than a nice slow root canal. 105.5 KNAC. Stu and Don are not really going to do that bungee cord thing tomorrow, are they? Uh, well, we had a coin toss. Stu is jumping off the Vincent Thomas Bridge. He can't. Why not? Because he might get hurt. Yes, what if he gets hurt? Oh, man, come on, Stu. It's only 15 stories. Wow. Well, this certainly adds a new dimension to the excitement, doesn't it? Well, you know, uh... The old death dimension. Stu should jump naked. Well, and maybe we should attach the bungee to his... Yeah, possibly. No, no. 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 Definitely not, but uh, we will be tempting the hand of fate. You will be tempting the hand of fate. Yes, tomorrow, Friday the 13th. Stu's jumping off a bridge. Come down, check it out. Beneath the Vincent Thomas Bridge San Pedro, take the Harbor Freeway 110 south till it ends. Get off on Harbor Boulevard, cruise into the parking lot for Catalina Cruises. Do, Do not stop, stop on, on the, the bridge. bridge. But bring some donuts and radio and come down party with us tomorrow morning. Pure Rock 105.5 KNAC. <laughs> Enjoy the ride, he says. <laughs> Jordan, five, four, three, oh, oh, God. Two, one. To be primo, you gotta be extremo. Your Rock 105.5 KNAC.
your Rock 105.5 KNAC. I'm Ricky Rackman. It's Radio Cat House. My uh, guest with me in the studio is Lawn Friend, who has reached someone on the air. Sebastian, what are you doing? Hello! Okay. <laughs> you, gotta, you, gotta, you gotta speak up a little bit, Sebastian. We just barely hear you. We're on right now. You're on, dude. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> so what have you been doing? Just practicing. I just got home from practice about 10 minutes ago. Everything going good? Yeah, everything's going great. Any... It's, a, uh, it's a very, very serious record that we're putting together right now. Serious? You can't be lying on it. It's, it's a, a lot of love ballads, then. Oh, well, actually, there are some ballads, but they damn sure ain't about love. <laughs> <laughs> well, when are you guys, as soon as your record's out, we're probably going to be seeing you guys out on the road again, right? Yep, yep, you know it. <laughs> Us and hopefully Guns N' Roses. Oh, I didn't know anybody was supposed to leak that out, but you just did, and it's live, so... No, well... You know, I just saw... I just got back from Rio. I saw Guns N' Roses. Yeah, was it... What was it like down there? Put it this way. I'm not going to be getting any checks from the Brazilian tourist board anytime soon. That was like... It just... It smelled really bad. The people were mean. Everybody spoke Portuguese. What was up with the stench? It was... Well, it was at a place called the Mackinac Stadium, which I think Mackinac just stands for sewage. Man. They Because they don't have bathrooms. They just they just pee in their seats. You kidding me? I don't know why. They, they just pee, pee, in, their they pee in their seats. That's what's, you know, you come to a concert, pee in your seats. It's, it's, a, it's a... I, I guess I it saves keep, a trip. I gotta keep myself out of trouble. <laughs> you, Sebastian wanted to fly in just to see Guns play and then leave, right? Guns, oh, I got another call. Hang on, hang on. Oh, great. <laughs> he's, got a, he's got a call waiting. Here we are. <laughs> here we are. Uh, for those of you uh, just turning into KNEC, here with uh, Ricky Rackman, lawn friend, talking to Sebastian Baku. Obviously, uh, the KNEC Radio Cat House show was so important that somebody else called on call waiting. <laughs> <laughs> Who was it? Was it somebody that important? No, uh, actually, it was my mom. Oh, oh. Uh, hey, you're on the goddamn radio again. <laughs> <laughs> Exchanging an intimate moment with Sebastian. You know, Bass tried to fly home to see his folks in Canada, and they hassled him in immigration. They wouldn't let him go across the border. Yeah, and then you know what was even funnier is that they said you can't come in. So I go back to the other border, America, and they didn't want to let me. In. So I'm gonna have to live on like a six, a six foot piece of pavement for the rest of my life. <laughs> He was gonna go out with a bang, but all he could do was all he could do was get somebody from Metallica. <laughs> <laughs> so we got Lars on the air. Oh no, not him again. Lars, tell Ricky how important it is. How important what is? Tell Ricky how important it is that Rip Magazine cover the making of your record. It's like the biggest thing that Rip Magazine, it's like circulation is just going out the window. It's incredible. <laughs> if you notice, if you read the installments, it's more about Lon coming down and hanging out and what Lon does here in the studio with us than what we actually do in the studio. <laughs> That's because you haven't done very much. One of the reasons this album is taking so long to put together is because Lon comes down here like every three days, you know. Here's an example. He comes down for a couple hours and, like, takes pictures and stuff so he can put it in his magazine. And then he calls the next day. Oh, there was no film in the camera. They didn't get developed properly. Then he comes down again the next day. Wait a that, second. I got him. better things to do than drive from 28 miles to North Hollywood, California. Lon, don't kid yourself. We don't have anything better to do. <laughs> Cats and Boots on Pure Rock 105.5. Can you see? I'm Ricky Rackman. This is the Radio Cat House Show. Once again, I said that Lawn Friend is joining us in the studio tonight. And apparently his is bigger than yours. I, 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 said, I said that... What are you talking about, Brian? His phone book. Oh, He's oh, got somebody phone else on the yes, phone. Yes, we, we're sitting here like babies. Where decided, is your mind? What better is your mind in? I have Lawn in the studio with me tonight and didn't know that it was going to be like, oh, let's see who you can call. So, Brian, <laughs> so Lon, tell us who you have got on the air well, with just us now, because, Lon. Because uh, he's the biggest New York giant fan in the world, and it's the Super Bowl. I got John Bon Jovi on the phone. Hi, John. What's happening, Lon? Hey. I bet your team, man. Good bet. And the seven-point spread's going to help uh, all you betting fans out there. Because I am a hockey fan, and at the risk of seeming truly lame, yeah. tomorrow's the Super Bowl, right? <laughs> <laughs> you're not even American. <laughs> you keep it loud, we'll keep it hard. <sighs> Southern California's Pure Rock. 105.5. Pure Rock 105.5 KNAC and uh, BOC. <laughs> we've we've got everybody in here now. I'm Brian Shock. We've got Lars and James from Talica who have flown in especially to uh, to send us off and. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. 
No, I got to say, you know, thank you from everybody here for doing this. Uh, I've said it a couple of times already, but this th your band was so important to this radio station yeah. that it wouldn't have been right unless you guys were here. Thank you. Yeah. Well, you thank know, you. this was a family well. at this radio station, and you guys are part of the family whether you knew it or not. So thank you once cool. again for no, coming I mean, here. without getting too... Uh, grounded. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, without getting too uh, sentimental or anything, I mean, you guys, I don't need to tell you what you guys have done for us, but, I mean, the last nine years has been a great ride, and we'll really miss Definitely. putting on 105.5 when we've landed LAX. <laughs> what are we going to do? <laughs> but no matter where we went, we saw, I mean, we saw Candy stickers, Candy C stickers in, in South America and yeah. and just all kinds of places. They, 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 Associated that with yeah. metal. I mean, that was yeah. the thing. Yeah. They had them on cars. I mean, they had they were showing that like, hey, you know, this is America kind of yeah. thing, and we're in the middle of nowhere, and they have something like that to show us. It's like very cool. Yeah, it's amazing. A uh, little fifteen hundred watt radio station can have that much power oh, across yeah. the world. You guys really, I mean, all over the world, like James is saying. No I mean, you guys really stood for metal in America, and everything you've done for us and for all the other bands out there on behalf of all of them, thank you so much. Well, it, it, it happened because there were people in this city who wanted to hear it, and there were people in this room who wanted to give it to them. There was, there was a mutual communication that needed to happen, and, uh, and it happened, and it was magic, and uh, now it's, it's mm -hmm. time has come, I guess. And now we're all, gonna to... not, we're all going to run off now and open our own radio station. There we go. Everybody in this room... Right? I'm going to start all over again somewhere. Oh, I know what if anybody's got a radio station for sale out there, let us know. <laughs> I, I want to I uh, uh, try to have everybody at least say some kind of goodbye here if we can do it. Uh, um, yeah, in fact, as a matter of fact, we got somebody on the phone here. Gonz, you there? <coughs> Gonz? Yeah. You there, man? Yeah, man. Gonzo Greg. Yeah! yeah. yeah. The only thing I miss most about KNAC and working there is that you didn't have to know anybody's name. You could just say, dude. Didn't matter who it was. You could just say dude and dude. address anybody. You're right. <laughs> Everybody was just dude. Hey, dude. 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 <laughs> and then Beavis and Butthead ripped us off. <laughs> hey, are they there yet? Lock the door. Barricade the door. Don't let them in, man. Uh, they haven't got here yet. No. We'll, we'll be able to smell the food. <laughs> <That's right>. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> anyway, man, uh, you got any uh, last thoughts? I was gonna. Uh, I'm kind of wondering, is it like it's kind of like the Alamo there right now? <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> Leave a few <laughs> presents for the next <laughs> next <bit>. people, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> no man. Why aren't you down here, man? Bar, man? What's that? Why aren't you down here, man? Why Why aren't I there? Yeah. Because I'm here. Yeah. Where I, Where's no, there? I like, in, I like it in Kentucky so damn much. <laughs> All right. You guys gotta come down here and give you a ride in my pickup. All right. Well. Uh, okay. Yeah. We'll be right over. Okay. As soon as we drink the tequila and eat the tacos and <laughs> play La Bamba 14 times, we'll be over there. Hey Guns, thanks for checking in. We gotta we gotta roll through these people or we're gonna run out of time here, okay? Right, man. You guys, you rock. It I was love you, man. <laughs> we love you too! Oh, man. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> All right, man, we'll see ya. See ya. Okay, let's uh, just roll through it. Darren, you wanna say something? Uh thanks a lot for listening. It was fun. Take care. Uh one nine hundred eight four four rock. Okay. Oh, you That's a joke. Yo, nasty Neil. Well, having been here since just about the beginning, it's been a nine-year ride. It's been wild. It's been great. And the hardest thing I'm going to have to do in about an hour and 15 minutes is go to my car and change the presets on my car stereo and erase 105.5. Thanks for coming, guys. You're the best. Stu. Bienvenidos a mis amigos para la radio amor. Nosotros. Um, I don't know what to say, man. <laughs> what can I say? This place is, was everything to me. I, um, I, I don't know. Um, as far as what you can do in the future, uh, it's kind of like KNAC light. Half the calories, half the taste, but. What are you going to do? Uh, look forward to seeing as many of you as, as I can out there. And You're thanks. Still, you're still employed. Yeah, at least I'm still employed. <laughs> Thank you. Thank Paul. you from the bottom of my heart. Paul. All right. Um, unbelievable. Um, un unbelievable. Um, no, uh, when, when you think back on life and, and even current events, uh, even political events that have happened in the last eight and a half years, um, I think of KNAC. And what we were doing at the time and, and how we related to it. Uh, 
uh, the war, Pam. Did a great job, <laughs> you know. Uh, un, uh, just, just unbelievable. Uh, you know that that something can uh, not be, uh, not be a preset on your radio dial, but instead be your life. You know, a, a lifestyle. Anyway, thank you. Um, yeah, that's all you can say. Thanks, Paul. Thrasher. See you, right. That's Thrash right. Pie, Thanks. my favorite guy. Bye, everybody. Take care, Paul. Listen, a lot of you didn't know that um, <laughs> that Anna Lee was here. Did my news for how many, a long time. Oh yeah. One of the highlights of us doing a show together was that I pretty much pressed it. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, no, yeah. no, no. I, I pressed a ham on that glass about every day. <laughs> so you can see it. No. So there's one last no, ham for you. Here. My bare ass for you. <laughs> Good night now. <laughs> All I have to say now is my life is complete. Thank you so much. Thanks. Razor, Razor, get in here. <laughs> I just want to say, the way this radio station got started is because there was a scene underground and somebody had the foresight to see that there was an actual audience out there. That's you. Thank you for being there. Now that we're gone, the scene's back underground. It's up to you to support it. Be there. I'll be there with you. Thanks. Former, former program director Pam Edwards. One thing about this radio station that most people don't know is there's about 100 people in the background that really made it happen. And it, if it really weren't for one man fighting all the time through all the corporate pressures, through all the budgetary things that happen at any company, which is what a radio station is, if it wasn't for Gary Price, there would have never been a KNAC. Yeah. So if you run... If you run into Gary anywhere, give him a job. Yeah, he deserves it. Ton Mastery. Thanks, Brent. I just wanted to say that I've always felt that I'll be rocking until I die, and I'm not dead yet. So uh, somewhere in L.A., sometime in the near future, there's going to be a hard rocking station again, and I hope that I'm a, a part of it, if not in charge of it. So we'll be back. Hey, can, can, you play some, can you play some Ringo Starr for me? <laughs> All right, who's, who's left? Greg. That's brutal. Greg, um, Greg Steele. You know, it's been it's been uh, an amazing experience. Uh, the radio station has has meant so much to so many people, um, and, and having been a a, a, a part of it uh, has been a uh, integral part of my life. And uh, once again, without the fans, this radio station would have been nothing. You guys should be proud of yourselves for taking care uh, of the of the hard rock scene, and it's got to continue. Um, we love you all, um, and we will miss you as much as uh, you may miss us. Thank you. Craig Williams. I was here when we signed off, and I'm here when we're signing. Uh, when we, I was here when we signed on. <laughs> yeah, I have another beer. I was here when we signed on. I'll be here when we're signing off, and I just want to say it's great to be a part of history, and, and thanks to all the listeners out there who made it possible. Michael Stark. Keep the attitude. Well put, well put. Remy, have you said anything yet? I said a lot. Uh, I said a lot over the last couple of years. Um, I just want to thank everybody for putting up with me for the last uh, two and a half years, letting me come and play. And uh, and it's bugs. It sucks. But, you know, that's life, I guess. Stuff happens. Yeah. And it's a, a, quite a misty-eyed moment here, and right. thanks for listening, and right. keep it hard. Malcolm, you want to say something real quick? Malcolm Riker, who put together the uh, production piece you're going to hear in just a second. Oh, well, the only thing I want to say is that I've only been here like six months, and I put that production piece together here that was a time capsule of nine years, and I feel like I've known everybody and everything that's going on here, man, because I've been listening to a lot of the old master reels and the old tapes and the old things, and man, it's just been a crazy, radical time, and I'm glad to be a part of it, man. Rock and roll, right. KNAC. Ever ready, Ed? Oh, my gosh. Um, well, I, I don't know what to say, except this has kind of been like my home for the last six years, and I'm kind of, I'm going to miss everybody down here. It's kind of like my family here, and, and it's kind of, I, I, I really don't know what to say other than the fact that uh, there's never been a station like this. There never will be. There will be, never be a group of people like this, so um, I'm definitely going to miss this. I'm glad I had a chance to work here and work with everybody and, and have fun, and all I know is I will spin CDs for food. Uh, <laughs> Uh, our, our general manager and uh, basically great all-around guy, Gary Price. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, we don't have time. Well, I don't know what to say. It's all been said a thousand times. I want to thank the fans of KNAC who made all this possible. If it were not for them, Pirate would be on the air now, and we wouldn't be. <laughs> 
They're not, and we are. One of our uh, major, major accomplishments. I want to thank the staff who made KNAC the station it has been for the last nine years. And uh, thank the audience for the attitude. Keep on rocking. Brian? I just... Uh being the last program director of this radio station has been kind of tough. I'm glad I was here a couple of times. Uh, as I've said over and over, it was about an attitude. It was about, this was a lifestyle. And it's, uh, it's a lifestyle that you can con continue to live even without this radio station. Just keep this memory with you always. Uh, thanks so much for being there. I want to finish with this production piece. This was put together by Stu Herrera and uh, Malcolm Riker. Uh, enjoy it and uh, enjoy the last song that you're going to hear on 105.5 KNAC, Long Beach, Los Angeles. Uh, thanks for being with us. KNAC Rock! Yeah, back <laughs> a chapter about to close. To close. I remember how it started. Scotty, Tom Mastery, Gonzo Gray, Bones, Nasty Neil, Thrasher, Dangerous Darren, Lori Free, Animal Annalee, Jack Trash, The Razor, Ricky Rackman, Brian Shock, Greg Steele, Mike Stark, Remy the Max Maxwell, all the part-timers, phone foxes, and fans worldwide. Thanks, KNAC. <laughs> it's a sad day out for rock and roll, man. And I'll carry a little bit of KNAC with me for the rest of my life. God bless you all. KNAC. It's an attitude. It's an attitude. Hope and hope and it's a lifestyle. What a rock and roll all night. <laughs> KNAC. It took nine years to build the world's only pure rock and roll empire. This is KNAC, Long Beach, Los Angeles. KNAC's Pure Rock is now signing off. Thanks for your support. You have been the greatest.